For those that don't know me, my name's Ali Henshaw. I work for Doncaster Council as a Stronger Communities Officer. Um, but I'm also the, council, the founder and coordinator of Cancer Buddies. But I'll come back to that later. A year ago, as we said, I stood here and traumatised most people that were here um, and told of my own cancer experience and how the, it affects those closest to you. Um, your friends, your family and your colleagues. But I also spoke about the longer lasting effects of living with and beyond cancer that others aren't always aware of. I also explained about being part of the survivorship group and how it had given me an opportunity to give something back while allowing me a very strong voice and probably some people would say a very loud voice in shaping the services in Doncaster. But today I'm here to tell you about the positive changes that we are making in Doncaster, especially over the last year surrounding survivorship and what I've achieved with Cancer Buddies. Now you'll have to bear with me because I'm not very good at medical. Oops, sorry. As you all know, you can't judge a book by its cover. And that's so very true for people affected by cancer. On the outside, everything looks fine. And when asked, you always say, I'm fine. It's not always true. You need to look beyond. You need to open the pages and take a closer look. There's so much more going on. And we all have our individual concerns. What might affect one person may not affect another. What may concern one person may not affect another. And a lot of people don't consider these, these things that are going on. Now, these issues are the main ones that were raised by people affected by cancer at the original open space event that we held, or Macmillan held, in t uh, two and a half years ago. Um, and that we, as the Doncaster Survivorship Group, are working towards improving by working together. In Doncaster, we're really lucky because we have partners from all services, as well as the most important people, which are the people affected by cancer. And by working together and listening to these people, we're actually making a stronger, more sustainable service. And by putting the pieces of the jigsaw together, by using the strengths that we all have, we are again building a lot stronger and more sustainable service. We've got really good pathways that we've built with referrals into the living well, centre that then do the holistic needs assessment and refer on to other services by using the partnership pathway. Back to Cancer Buddies. As many of you that know me know that it's my passion, which I suppose being the founder of it is only natural. Um, and hearing me talk about it, I am very sort of vocalised about making sure that the people that matter are listened to, that the people that have lived and survived cancer, but also their family members and friends, colleagues, are supported. Having gone through my own experience, I know that that support was missing. Knowing what was available was not always there. So we're trying to make sure that people are aware of what's available and that they can have whatever support and help that they need. Last year, Cancer Buddies was an idea in the making. Now, with the support of partners and amaz our amazing volunteers, we're a fast-growing service. Cancer Buddies provides one-to-one, -one, non-clinical peer support to both survivors and family who've gone through a cancer experience and want to give something back. All of the Buddies, Oops, sorry. Told you it wasn't, that wasn't any good. Oops. All of the buddies are volunteers who have received Macmillan training. They're there to listen, offer a shoulder to cry on, or just talk things through with the person so that 
The client has got somebody who truly understands what they're feeling emotionally because each of these buddies has already got the t-shirt, literally and figuratively. Since launching Cancer Buddies on March the 6th last year, we've had 56 people come forward to be buddies. They've all experienced cancer in one way or another, whether it's being as a survivor, and I'm sorry, Dot, or, or as a family member, because family members need support as well. They need somebody to talk to. They need somebody to share their feelings and emotions with. As you can see, we've got 15 men and 41 women. And of those buddies, we have carers and, sorry, survivors. But we've also got some professionals that have also done the training because within the partnerships that we've got, with such as the Leisure Trust, um, who actually provide um, reduced membership to the local uh, gyms, swimming and everything else, but they encourage you to take a buddy along for free so that you don't have to go and face the gym or swimming on your own. And as Doc was saying, it's for your mental health as much as your physical health. Um, but we needed to make sure that we'd got professionals in place, at, such as the gyms, that were aware of what a person was going through, so that if they got upset, as more often than not I do, um, you'd got somebody to talk to that had got a little bit of understanding. Yes, did not have the same experience, but they had some understanding. In a year, we've had 76 referrals. Now, we're not highly publicised as to what we're doing. Most of our referrals come through from The Living Well. Um, some come through from Meeting New Horizons, The Aurora, and through DMBC, through our wellbeing service. So, we are getting there. As you can see, we've had 56 women. And we actually have had 20 men, which, considering that most men don't talk about it, that is, in some ways, a good number. Um, probably a lot of it is the fact that I talk a lot about it. And as you can see, between uh, survivors and carers, we've got a, a fair range in assortment. As you will see from some of the feedback that has come through from our clients, the service is something that is desperately needed. And if we can make a difference to just one person, it'll all have been worthwhile. Between our clients and our buddies, we actually cover 27 different types of cancer. And considering the year that we've only been going, I think that's quite a scary statistic. Um, it shows that the service is fit for purpose because we match clients with somebody who has had a similar experience. And up to now, that is working. It's needed to provide the emotional support for both the carers and the survivor so that they get or they are able to share their own personal experience with somebody that understands, that is non-judgmental, because you have so many thoughts that go through your head that you can't always share with your family. You don't want to put those thoughts into a family member's head because they probably have, it probably hasn't crossed their mind. So you need somebody that's one step removed but does understand. And I know this from both sides of the experience, having come through cancer myself, but also having a family member, or several family members. Going forward, there are many pathways open to cancer buddies and the survivorship strategy, as long as we continue to work together and listen to the people that matter. With the support of Matt Millen and Doncaster Council, Cancer Buddies has been recognised at a senior level, both politically and managerially, 
regarding the benefits of the joint service approach. Within Doncaster Council, we're working with the community teams as well as wellbeing and other departments, helping to recognise areas where support and information are required, working with community groups to help prevent social isolation, putting residents more in control of services provided, and making sure they're recognised as good practice by the users. In the workplace, making sure that workplaces support all employees who receive a cancer diagnosis in an appropriate manner, using best practice to implement plans to make sure that the appropriate adjustments are made when and where necessary for each individual person, because not one shoe fits all. And this is what we've got to make sure people, professionals, employers are aware of. One shoe does not fit all. Everybody is an individual. Our own HR are working to make changes to policies and procedures, as well as our sickness recording that affects people with a cancer. It is a working, usable service that we hope to promote and share with other authorities who can then adapt it to meet their own needs. And hopefully it will spread within South Yorkshire and then hopefully across the country, because it is a service that is definitely needed. With reduced resources across the country, it is only by investing in community volunteers to help provide much needed local services. And with the changing demographic, expanding this approach to other long term conditions. And this isn't something that can just be used for people with cancer. There are so many other long term conditions that this would benefit and hopefully in time that will happen. I've recently been lucky enough to receive recognition for the work I've done with Cancer Buddies. Being awarded Pride of Doncaster Council Worker of the Year, I've been nominated for Woman's Own Role Model of the Year. <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> but I've also just received a prestigious invitation to the Royal Garden Party at Buckingham Palace. <laughs> but none of it would have been possible without the support of the partners in the strategic group, Doncaster Council, but most especially these people. They are the most amazing buddies possible. I'm sorry. I'd like to thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen to me and I'd like three things to take away with you besides the free pens that are on the table over there because nobody likes to go away without a freebie. And these are the three messages. I can't see it very well because I'm crying. <laughs> But no, every person affected by cancer, don't just assume you know what they want. Listen to them, take notice, and try and work to that. A person affected by cancer is not defined by that cancer. I'm an individual, Dot's an individual, Denton, Richard. Every person that has had cancer is a person. They have other feelings, emotions, and everything inside them that are going on, other issues. So don't just assume that just because they've got breast cancer, prostate cancer, that is who they are. We're not. We're human. We've got feelings and emotions. But what I'd really like you to do is share that information and best practice. And from that, you are going to make a better, stronger and more sustainable service. And with all the changing demogra demographics within the country, hopefully these services will be better and stronger, not just for people with cancer, but also for other long-term conditions. So thank you very much. I would just like to say thank you to Keith Morris, who is one of the facilitators in Doncaster, who actually... Um, 
understood what was going on in my head when I sent him all the notes for doing my PowerPoint, because he actually made sense. And for a man to be able to do that, <laughs> it's amazing. So thank you.